Hello my friends and welcome. I bought these lithium iron phosphate cells two years ago. I think it's time to use them, if they still work after all this time, and make a battery pack for my next project, which is a very complex project that needs a lot of work and testing. So in this episode I will show you how to build a small lithium iron phosphate battery pack using these cells and the DALI BMS. As I said, these cells were bought two years ago and I charged them only once, about a year ago. Since then they have been sitting in the box waiting to be used. So let's measure their voltage. After one year they are down to about 3 volts. That's a pretty good self-discharge rate. My next project will be a new UPS, much better than the ones I made so far. First of all because it will have a lithium iron phosphate battery. This is my first time working with this type of cells, so I read and learned a lot about them. Lithium iron phosphate cells have several advantages over lithium ion cells, which makes them the perfect choice for a homemade UPS. Let's see. Low self discharge rate. They retain their charge for a longer period when not in use, which is exactly what a UPS needs. They have a much stable voltage around the nominal value. I made this discharge cycle graph to compare it to a lithium ion cell. And if you need a 12 volts battery, you can see that lithium iron phosphate has a much more stable voltage around the required 12 volts than lithium ion. Good thermal stability, they can handle higher temperatures with minimal degradation. Longer lifespan. And very important, the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is much safer. In case of a short circuit or other extreme conditions, lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries are much more likely to catch fire. But there are also some disadvantages. Lithium ion cells have a higher voltage and a higher energy density. So for the same amount of energy, a lithium iron phosphate battery is bigger and heavier than a lithium ion battery. But because the UPS is a stationary device, not portable, that's not a problem. Of course! Another important factor is the price. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are more expensive. But let's get back to my cheap cells. Before building a battery pack I need to top balance them, because they have been unused for a long time. For this process all the cells must be connected in parallel. I don't have a 10 cell battery holder, so I ordered some battery contact plates and springs. And I made this simple battery holder from pieces of laminated floorboards, screws and thick wires. Now I can connect all the cells in parallel to make a 10p battery pack. I don't have a charger for this type of cells, so I will use my old DIY variable power supply. The voltage will be set to 3.65 volts. This is the maximum recommended voltage for lithium iron phosphate cells. Although I read that some cells can go a bit higher to 3.75 volts. I will increase the current to 6 amps. The cells are being charged with a constant current constant voltage method, similar to lithium ion cells. You can see the voltage rising slowly. Even though I am charging the cells with 6 amps, it will still take a lot of time to fully charge this battery pack. Why? Because the 6 amps current is divided among 10 cells, so each cell only receives 600 milliamps. With this high current there are also power losses. If I measure the voltage directly at the battery terminals, you can see that there is a difference of 0.2 volts from the charging voltage. Even with these thick 2.5 square millimeter wires. At 6 amps there is a power loss of 1.2 watts in the wires, imperfect contacts and battery pins. After half a day, the current consumption is starting to decrease. But the charging process will take a few more hours. Then, when the battery is almost charged, you can see the current dropping. With this low current, the difference between the charging voltage and battery voltage is getting smaller. Finally, late at night, the current goes to zero and the battery is fully charged. This is top balancing the cells. They are all charged to exactly the same voltage. Next, I will discharge the cells using my constant current load tester. These cells can theoretically be discharged to 2.0 volts, but I will set the cutoff voltage to 2.3 volts. 
There is no need to stress and discharge the cells to 2.0 volts, because there is very little usable capacity in the last 0.3 volts. I will set the load current to 6 amps, it will take another half a day to discharge the cells. Next I will select only 4 cells with the lowest self discharge rate to make the battery pack. And I will repeat the charging process with 4 amps this time, the cells are charged after 7 hours. Then I will use the load tester again on these 4 cells. After 5 hours and 40 minutes the battery voltage is dropping to 2.3 volts and the discharge cycle is finished. These cells were unused for a long time so I gave them a total of 3 charge cycles. Now they are fully charged, balanced and ready to be used. This process alone took me a whole week. So you can see why the entire project took so long. To make the battery pack I tried to spot weld some nickel strips on the cells. But there is a problem, my spot welder isn't powerful enough for this type of cells. Look how thick the cell housing is. So I tried to find some 4S battery holders, but they are very expensive and will arrive in 3 to 4 weeks. I need a better, cheap and fast solution, so back to the laminated boards again. I measured and cut two pieces. They will hold the cells together like this. I will use the same battery contact plates, but only the positive pins, no springs. I want to minimize the power losses and the springs are not strong enough for a good contact. The contact plates will be mounted with strong sticky foam tape. These short thick wires will make the series connections inside the battery pack. Don't worry about a short circuit, there is enough clearance between the joints and battery. I soldered the balance wires and I also insulated the joints. The foam tape will also help to hold the cells instead of the weak springs. This is how the cells will be connected inside the battery pack. For a better contact and lower power losses I will clean the contact plates and battery terminals with fine sandpaper. Instead of the weak battery contact springs I will tighten the cells with this long screw, washers and self-locking nuts. I'll tighten the screw using the proper wrench. Or not. I also added a counter nut under the top panel, so the cells will not be damaged when I tighten the top nut. These are the balance wires coming from the bottom of the battery holder. Now I can add the cells, checking the polarity of course, and tighten the top nut. The cells sit nicely, held in position by the foam tape and contact pins. The MDF boards are also a bit flexible. To make some sort of battery terminals for the balance leads, I'm going to use this small piece of strip board. This battery pack needs a good BMS, you can go cheap on other things but not on safety. DALI BMS protection boards have very good reviews, so I ordered one. Check out how small it is. Before connecting anything to the BMS, first solder the balance leads to the battery pack. Be careful not to short the wires, you can leave more space between the leads to be safe. Check the voltage on the balance leads to be sure they are connected correctly. Solder the battery negative wire to the B- output of the BMS. In my case both wires are blue. Finally you can connect the balance leads to the BMS. The positive output of the battery goes directly to the load, which for now is this 12V light bulb. This DALI BMS has battery temperature protection. To test it I will use my small heat gun to heat up the temperature sensor. In a few seconds the BMS is detecting that the cells are heating up and disconnects the battery. After a minute the temperature probe cools down and the battery is reconnected automatically. Before continuing with the tests I will cover the edges of the battery with Kepton tape to hold everything in position and to insulate the contact points inside the battery pack. I added another set of balance leads over the existing one to connect my battery monitor. 
I will connect my load tester to measure the real capacity and energy of this battery pack with a 1 amp load. Now we can check the voltage of each cell and the total voltage while the battery is discharging. After 4 hours the cells are at 3.2 volts and the battery voltage is 12.85 volts. 5 hours have passed and we are still at 12.5 volts. So a 4S lithium iron phosphate battery is much more stable around the 12 volts value than a 3S lithium ion battery. Some devices have a voltage regulator included, so you can connect them directly to this battery, without an additional DC converter. We have reached the final part of the discharge cycle, so let's see the over discharge protection of the BMS. The voltage is dropping fast now and when the first cell goes under 2.3 volts, the BMS will disconnect the battery. So far so good, let's check the numbers. 5.5 hours autonomy with a 1 amp load, a capacity of 5.56 amp hours and a total energy of 71.5 watt hours. That's pretty good for these old cells. In my city we have only short power outages, for seconds or minutes. So this battery is sufficient for my UPS. But if you need a longer autonomy, you can double the capacity and make a 4S 2P battery pack. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos, you can check out my Patreon page. For example, I made a short video about upgrading my variable power supply to be able to handle 6 amps or more for a long period of time. It's time to recharge the battery using the same power supply. The charging voltage must be set slightly higher than the maximum battery voltage. Why? So that it can reach the overcharge cutoff voltage, which for this BMS board is 3.65 volts plus or minus 0.05 volts per cell. So it's possible that the maximum battery voltage can go up to 3.7 volts times 4, that's 14.8 volts until the overcharge protection kicks in. At least one cell must reach the overcharge protection voltage, otherwise the battery will be continuously charged and over time will damage the cells. I will charge the battery with 2 amps. While the battery is charging, you can see that the cells remain almost perfectly balanced here at 3.29 volts and later at 3.4 volts. This BMS also has passive balancing which starts at 3.5 volts for each cell and is only active while the battery is charging. This is useful in the final part of the charging process as the voltage increases rapidly and just a few extra milliamp hours for one cell can make a big difference in voltage between cells. And when the first cell goes over 3.7 volts, the charging current drops to zero and charging is complete. The cutoff voltage of 3.73 volts seems a bit high, but other DALI BMS boards can go up to 3.8 volts per cell, so I don't think this is a problem. If you want a lower overcharge protection voltage, you can buy a programmable BMS board, but these are more expensive. For a big and expensive battery pack, it's probably worth it. Now the cells will slowly self-discharge. I will simulate this with a small load on my battery tester. You can see the voltage decreasing slowly. When all the cells self-discharge to 3.5 volts, the BMS will start charging and balancing the cells again. This will cost another charge cycle from the battery's lifespan. With good quality lithium iron phosphate cells with a low self-discharge rate, this will happen once every couple of days. And considering that this type of cells can withstand thousands of cycles, the battery will last you several years without problems. If the cells become unbalanced over time, you can also add an active balancing module to help the battery pack. I have an older video about these active balancers, you can click here to watch it. The small lithium iron phosphate battery pack is finished. In the next episode I will show you how I built a customizable UPS around this battery. It's customizable because you can make it with multiple outputs with almost any voltage and current you want. If you don't want to miss it, please subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye.